Hey guys. Okay, so I watched a lot of videos on how to uh, winterize a, a Coachman Clipper 17 uh, BHS, and um, a lot of the videos were were pretty good. They're pretty. I mean, there's two ways you can basically do it. You can take your uh, compressor and blow out the lines, and you would use. Um, you can go to Walmart and buy something like this. And it basically screws into your um, your uh, city connection, and then you use a um, any type of compressor. You can use any type of compressor, and the hard part is getting the fittings right. Um, I had to use a plastic tube because there's no collar on this. It's kind of a weird setup. So one way to do it is to hook it up to a compressor, blow out all the lines, and then obviously you come underneath and you uh, you unscrew all these. And that's going to drain out your water. So the first thing you do, obviously, is open up all of these. Uh, there's three of them down here. Um, one's your fresh water tank. One's your, um, and the rest are for the drains. And then the other thing you want to do is uh, come to your hot water heater. I'll just open it and close it so you can see. So this is your anoid tube. And what that does is, um, a lot of people don't know that, but it, it's designed to deteriorate. So the inside of your non-stainless steel tank doesn't deteriorate. It deteriorates the rod. This is the 2015. You can see, see the rod's got tons of life left on it. But it also serves as your drain plug. So you would basically unscrew it, pull it out. I already did it, but when you do it, a bunch of water is going to run out of here. If you just had your hot water heater on, be extremely careful because it's going to be hot. Um, you probably don't, but if you did, be careful about that. So you're going to want to um, undo that. So you're going to drain everything. So, and then you're going to blow it out with the compressor. So that's the first way to do it. Now, once you do that, you take some of your, um, I got an empty bottle here, but you take some of your um, RV and Marine uh, antifreeze. Obviously, you don't use automotive. This, uh, the pink stuff is harmless to the environment for the most part. So you want to use that. They cost about $2.50 at uh, Walmarts and they got tons of them in the, in the fall because everyone's doing this. So after you drain the lines, blow the lines out, you want to go into the traps and pour um, probably about a quarter to a half gallon down the toilet um, and down the sink in the shower to make sure you got antifreeze in the trap so nothing freezes there. And then uh, after you do that, you're pretty much complete. The second way to do it is, um, if you don't have a compressor, do the same thing where you drain the lines, just like I showed you with all those drain points. Then the next thing you wanna do is, um, most, most of the campers are designed to siphon from your pump. So um, my first time at this, I really didn't watch any YouTube videos and I'm like, okay, well what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just fill up my, uh, my fresh water tank and then just my pump will pump out of there and then that way I'm covered with my fresh water tank and then it seems easy enough but I found something extremely interesting and a lot of people um, tanks are designed differently but on this this model the 16 BHS in my opinion it's um, designed somewhat poor and I'll show you in a second okay. here so if you look under this big white thing that spans the whole bottom is the tank and so I'm not going to say it was my mistake, but what I did is I took about five gallons of antifreeze and I kept pouring it in here, hoping that my pump, which goes up to this line and the pump goes up there, hoping the pump would have enough fluid to engage and pump through the, the uh, freshwater lines so I could winterize all my lines. Well, what I found out is if you see that two by four, it's holding the tank because what happens is it's holding the tank from bowing. So what happens is the tank will bow down. It'll bow like that. And this ridiculous drain line is in the wrong spot because it's not at the low spot of the tank. So I literally put in four gallons here and yet my pet pump would not run because this is, it's not sucking from the bottom of the tank. It's a, amazingly, this is a really long, large surface area. So what's happening is the antifreeze is just sitting at the bottom. It's bowing at the bottom. So, um, so I figured out two things. First, if you think you're, so the first you thing I figured out is if you think you're draining your freshwater tank, you might not actually be draining it because 
there could be up to four gallons of fresh water sitting there even though you undid your fresh water drain line. So in the winter, that could freeze and crack your tank. And then in the summer, when you hook it up, you're gonna have water leaking all over the place. So that's one thing I figured out. So a lot of people say, don't put uh, antifreeze in your fresh water tank. Um, I understand what they're saying because there will be a lingering smell and stuff, but you gotta remember, it's also already in all your, uh, all your water lines anyways, if you, um, if you winterized it that way. So you have to be very careful to make sure you drain this tank because um, if I was to undo this, hold on a second, you could see, you could see the antifreeze moving around in there. Now, if I didn't know that, that could have been all fresh water and then I would have a big problem in, with freezing going on. So in my opinion, it's good to pour some antifreeze into fresh water tank. Uh, that way you're ensured that it's not gonna freeze. But let me show you how the um, manual for the uh, coachman actually tells you how to do it. It's mostly about the um, bunkhouse uh, 16 BHS. <clears throat> and there's a couple different setups, but um, you can see I have my, uh, my eating area. And then under one of the seats is the hot water heater and it's surrounded by styrofoam. And then uh, this is another thing you're gonna wanna do. There's a thing called a bypass, which is right here. This bypass will allow you to winterize your uh, your camper without filling up your hot water heater. So you're gonna wanna turn <coughs> two valves off, these two valves off and this one on. So the water is basically gonna come through here and go around here. It's gonna bypass the uh, hot water heater so you're not filling up the hot water heater. For the hot water heater, all you need to do is drain it, which is taking that, uh, that anoid tube out. Next thing is, you're going to have a pump. It's going to probably be in a weird spot, like in this case, it's under the bed. Now this pump comes with this siphon line. So it comes with it. And unfortunately on mine, it's kinked, so it's kind of not the greatest thing. But what you do is you just put it in a, you can put it in your bucket or your um, container of antifreeze. And then you basically come over, turn your pump on and it'll, it'll start sucking out of here. And then you would come over to your faucet, turn the light on here. And you can turn your faucet on and it's gonna come out. Let me fix the pump real quick. The pump is uh, got that kink in it, so I reduced the kink. There we go. So you're gonna get some action like that. It's filling the lines up. So you're gonna want to do that for the hot and cold, for for everything, the toilet, um, the shower, in your shower um, head. So that's what you're gonna to wanna to do there. And that's some of the lessons I learned on, on how to winterize. But um, again, if you don't have a compressor, your uh, pump should have a ex external line like this that you can just put into your um, container of uh, antifreeze. You could probably just put it in, in here and then uh, suck it out, run it through your lines. And then uh, the last thing you wanna do is you can leave everything closed the way it is Come spring, when you de-winterize, you're gonna to wanna to remember to uh, turn those valves because of what happens is when you turn your hot water or when you um, go turn your hot water on, you're only gonna get cold water because it's completely bypassing and you're gonna think your uh, hot water heater is broken when it's really not. So remember in the spring to turn those lines. Thanks.